Hello and welcome to a special Saturday episode of the Haskin Cast podcast. I was going to wait to release this on Wednesday and do a double episode because this interview kind of coincides with the album review I'm doing this week. But you know what? I just couldn't wait to get this out to you guys. This is one of my favorite interviews that I've ever done. And it's been the culmination of a lot of circumstances that took to come together to make this happen. But I am so grateful we were finally able to work it out. This wonderful, young, talented lady is someone who I I met through very unfortunate circumstances, but I'm very, very grateful for her friendship. She is someone I really admire as both an artist and just the person that she is. She's one of those people that has this amazing energy and way about her that you can't help but to gravitate towards. When you meet somebody like her, you you keep them in your life because they are just uh, amazing people. And on top of that, she is such an incredibly talented photographer. I love her work, both uh, as a concert photographer, but also the uh, other pictures that she does, these setups that she creates uh, just from nothing. And they're very stunning. She has a very unique style, something where I'd like to think if I saw a picture and didn't know it was hers, I would immediately think it was hers because there's just something about the way she creates her art that's very unique and stunning. Every single picture. I've never seen one where I thought, eh, not one. So uh, real quick, before we get to the interview with Rachel Elijah, we, uh, well, I am almost, uh, well, actually, I am halfway through the album, The Forgotten Puppet Show. Things have really picked up. I've been able to make a lot of progress on it. I am hoping for a November release at this point. Uh, Hard to say because some other things look like they may be developing on the horizon as well, but that's kind of where my thought process is headed. And then I'll be back to work in uh, late December working on the next album. But for now, uh, halfway through the Forgotten Puppet Show, very excited to get that one out to you guys. That being said, uh, if you haven't checked out Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast, my other show that I do, It is wherever you are listening to this right now. If you're streaming this from my website, if you are on Podbean, if you're on Apple Podcasts, if you are on Stitcher Radio, wherever you're listening, you could type in The Magician's Podcast and, well, you'll get one of two things. If you type it Magician's S apostrophe, you'll get the actual like Magician's show. Uh, But if you type Magician apostrophe S or you type in Uriah Heap, then you will get The Magician's Singular Podcast which is me going over all the songs of Uriah Heep from beginning to where they currently are. And they are in the studio. Well, I guess they finished the recording now uh, is the last I've heard. I don't know if they're still working on overdubs or not, but uh, don't have a release date for the album. That will be coming soon. So if you haven't checked out that show and you've been curious about Uriah Heep or you love Uriah Heep or you don't know who they are, go check it out and listen to their music and experience every song with me. That being said, let's get to this wonderful interview that I had the great pleasure of doing with my dear friend, Rachel Elijah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited to bring on my guest. Not only is she uh, just an amazing and brilliant photographer, she is one of my most favorite people on the planet. You will love her. You absolutely have no choice. Her name is Rachel. Let's welcome her to the show. Rachel, how are you? I am doing amazing, and I am so excited to talk to you, and thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I've wanted to do this for a while, and of course, your schedule is just so incredibly hectic because everyone in the (laughs) world wants to work with you. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. I don't know if everybody wants to work with me, but um, I also juggle kids too, so it's like... Um, but yeah, you were just so sweet and had so much patience with me and thank you so much for being persistent with me. Also, it's like, uh, I haven't done a podcast interview before, so this is, um, new to me (laughs) and I'm excited that you're the person that does this. So thank you. You're doing great. Don't worry about it at all. (laughs) Uh, and I have to say, you know, you're one of those people that in my life, whenever I see your name pop up on my screen, like maybe you posted something or, you know, you shared a post and it, it'll say Rachel did this. And I, it just makes me smile every time I interact with you or see you pop up. You just have this amazing energy and way about yourself that just makes me happy to be around you. Well, I feel the same about you since we first like somehow crossed paths on Facebook. Like you have this 
magical light around you. And um, I am so happy that we're a part of each other's worlds. And um, I would say, like, the last time I talked to you, you were kind of telling me how how you perceived me as an artist and I had never felt really so seen by somebody before as like just little details about uh the way that I do things or um the way that my art comes across or even how I'm more of not necessarily professional but a casual professional (laughs) I don't really I don't know I felt like wow this guy like really knows who I am somehow and it's so like you're so perceptive um so yeah well thank you you know i think part of the the thing with people these days is they might not know how to explain what they see and so they don't say anything or they're just like yeah your stuff is really good i really like it but they don't they don't know how to articulate what they mean and on top of that we're exposed to just so much these days it's hard to really take one thing and focus on it and really see what it's all about yeah that is true also but also, I just feel like you, not everybody is that perceptive. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's that, you know. Yeah, you're just an incredible individual and just you're full of so much positivity and you're always supporting me. And I just can't thank you enough for everything that you've um, contributed to what I have been trying to do for the last few years, too. Well, so. thank you. And, and for you, I mean, you are such an inspiration to me because you balance so many things in your life and you're constantly like, oh, I want to do this, but this just happened. And so I have to do this. And you're always (laughs) just like on a moment's notice, ready to jump in and help people. And I think that's amazing. Thank you. I don't know. I I kind of love living my life. Like every day is a surprise. (laughs) (laughs) It kind of is for you. Yeah. But it's just that that's like the magic in life for me. It's like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen today. Like, is today going to like, I don't know. There's just something about like, like I've tried the whole, like do a nine to five every day, like do that. And, um, it was just so soul crushing. I had like, I have to have like change in my life all the time to feel like I'm still growing as a person and I'm learning things and I'm like, you know, expressing the joy that I have within me to, to contribute to the world and like contribute to the beauty of the world. Like I have such a passion for it. And, um, through photography, I, I love being able, I love taking pictures of people. So that's my, my biggest thing is people because I love showing them, like, look at how beautiful you are. Like, cause there's so many times when, you know, we look at ourselves in the mirror and we have kind of this like distorted perception based off of like cultural norms or media norms or whatever, like we think that we should look like. But um, I love to capture just these moments where people are kind of off guard and they don't realize like how beautiful they look just naturally. And the biggest, like greatest joy that I get is when somebody's like, Oh my God, I've never had, I've never seen myself like that before. And it's like, yeah, because that's, that's what you actually look like. Like you're beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) Because we have to use the Instagram filter and smooth out our skin and try and be perfect when you're perfect as you are. That's what your perfection is. But we have all these pressures and ridiculous social ideals of what people are supposed to be. Yeah, that we we can't be who we are. And if we can't be who we are, then we're not happy because we're told that us as ourselves is not right. Right. Or it's not enough or, you know, and yeah, it is. It's very distorted to look at the things that are online because none of that's real. I've worked with really, really beautiful models. And when they don't have all the makeup and the lighting, they look just like normal people. Right, <laughs> so, yeah. like, they don't look like they do in the final picture. And then like that 13 year old girl is like looking at that final picture going, why don't I look like her? And it's like, well, if you put the makeup on and the lighting, you'll look like her too. I promise. <laughs> like, right. right. It's, it's almost like saying to a tree, well, you're not good enough because you don't look like a waterfall. Oh, exactly. And it, yeah. And, and especially for the young kids, it's the hardest on them, I think, because they grow up from the beginning with that expectation of, oh, I'm supposed to look like that or I'm not good enough. And what does that do to them? Yeah, I don't know. Plus, the Internet is like so new as this 
this thing that's constantly around us. Like I didn't grow up with Instagram. So right, <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know what that's going to do um, to the future, but I obviously there's benefits of us all being connected and being able to share information as well. So yeah, it's it's a double edged sword. I think it, yeah. there's a lot of benefits, but there's a lot of bad to it as well. Yeah. So I, I was trying to think of how I wanted to describe your photographs. And there's really to me, there's a couple of different facets. There's the photographs that you take that are pretty straightforward, a lot of concert footage in that. And then there's the photos that you create almost another plane of existence. Aww. And to, <laughs> to try and describe it to people if you've ever seen a poster that really only shines under black light, it has, you know, it has a certain property to it that you always recognize as this is what a black light poster looks like. Your art has a similar specific tone to it. And I'm only using the black light reference because I think it's one that a lot of people will be able to understand. But your photographs, they have a certain quality to them, a certain I don't want to say filter because I'm I know that's not right. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like they have a certain edge to them that makes them very specific. No, thank you. I appreciate that. I've definitely like um developed a style over the last like twenty years and kind of like have this specific like, oh, a picture should look like that <laughs> in my head. Right. So so I really appreciate you seeing that. And also um as a kid, I I don't know if you uh, collected cards at all as a kid, like the Marvel X-Men cards that were all like shiny and like had uh, like metallic on them. Like I was like really into X, like I was a really nerdy 10 year old kid that was like, <laughs> collecting X-Men cards. But the artwork was so like it wasn't like the comic book. It was so much more like just like powerful art of like the characters and the colors were so like vibrant and metallic that always inspired me in art um because or even like the um heavy metal magazines from the 80s they had a very like specific like weird style like i don't know i um i always just sort of like the colors when it's like that's what I love about concert lighting. It just does that thing where like sometimes you can catch the light and it's just like, boom. And I don't know. <laughs> no, you're, you're right. Con and concert lighting, if it's done well, gives you a oh, lot of opportunities to, to catch people in angles and, and certain types of lighting and shading that you would never put them in otherwise. Never. Yeah. And I don't have to Photoshop anyone's face. It's all lighting. It's like just beautiful. Like it's like, oh, my gosh. So, yeah, I love I love doing it. And plus, I don't have to bring the lights. I just show up with a camera. It's really nice. Right? Yeah, you don't have <laughs> to really that. like that. Part. Those giant umbrellas and all that. that somebody uh... else. Like I have a lighting guy. That's <laughs> it's really... I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's I, you do a lot of concert footage. Yeah, it's it's really fun. So <laughs> so going along uh, of the theme of the, the photographs that you do outside of live for a moment, these scenes that you set up, how how much time do you have to invest from, you know, coming up with here's what I want to shoot to making it actually a physical thing that you can go and film? Um, like for like the zombie stuff yeah. or like the, the weird like monstery like aliens and all that. Yeah, all of that because that is such fascinating the, the, well <laughs> let me let me take a step back when I was a kid I used to take my Star Wars characters and I would make plays out of them but they would just be like one shot plays oh my so, gosh I love you that is so cute <laughs> I was also a nerdy 10 year old and a 49 year old <laughs> but uh but that's kind of what I imagine you're doing something similar, but you're using real people and uh, and better lighting. But, <laughs> yeah. but is that kind of the same? Like you get an idea for here's what I want to shoot. Now I have to make this a reality. Well, well, I I appreciate you giving me that much of like credit. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow life and the universe and God, they just all know like Rachel likes weird crap. So it just. <laughs> <laughs> it sends all these weird requests my way and I am usually very happy to be like yes I'm gonna do that shoot so um but like like they're all different like uh I did Alice Cooper's son's band co-op um in we just had access to this place called Fear Farm which is basically like um 
a haunted house during Halloween time, but I knew a girl that worked there and she was like, you guys can shoot here before we open. Like we were just going to take random pictures of them. Like kind of, I had no idea what was even in there because I'd never been to a fair, <laughs> but I was like, Hey band, I got this free location. And then the band's like, cool, let's go take pictures at fear farm. And then we happened to see this amazing alien set. And then I was like, dash here. And like, I had a, happen to have a doctor's mask which is actually kind of traumatizing now oh. <laughs> but, but anyways this was before to it pre-2020 uh, um, yeah right <laughs> anyways um yeah he he wore it and that picture has been like i've gotten a lot of mileage out of that picture but that wasn't stage it looks like i did a lot on that picture but it was like we were just sort of in this really cool environment at the right time with the right people and like a picture came together but then there's other times where like um, I did a picture of like alien people on top of a mountain in this like UFO thing, which that that wasn't really me either. That was the UFO bed guy that's like, hi, I want to do a photo shoot on a mountain with my UFO bed with alien people. Sure. <laughs> so Why not? I was like, awesome. I'm in. And then they brought like guys to, like carry this crazy UFO up a mountain. It was it was quite the feat. Yeah. So, how, <laughs> how do you say no to something like that? I mean, that's right? kind of a dream come true, right? It really was. It was very cool. I love those photos. But um, either, either way, though, you're capturing a moment. So whether it's something that you stage or something that you just see or put together on a moment's notice, your job as a photographer is really to capture a moment for people right. to look at and go, I wish I had been a part of this moment. Yeah. Or just also um, the perception of reality. Like, you know, in the sci-fi shoot, I'm obviously trying to angle things more creatively or like the perception is like a different world. Whereas like, you know, a portrait is there's a picture of your face. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, and I want to get to the stage photography in a moment, but I'm going to take a sidestep to another project you worked on with our mutual friend, Reggie Vincent, who was on the show recently. Aww. Uh, man, what a guy. And you shot Aww, a video I love with Reggie. him. Yeah, Reggie's the best. Yeah, he is pretty awesome. But what was that experience like doing video? Uh, which which film one, the Witch in the Woods video? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was uh, that was an amazing time. He's just a character, and the stories that I have been privileged enough to listen to him talk about were just so cool. Um, but yeah, we we like <laughs> so when we we got this cabin in Payson because it's by a creek, uh, so and it was kind of like wooded. But then we would like have kind of like a green room staging area for all the like costumes and stuff in the cabin that was next to it. But one scene I really wanted to do, uh, like smoke bombs in the back where it was all like cool colored like military smoke. But I I got the military grade kind, which smell like they smell terrible like sulfur. And I, we didn't realize how big they were gonna be. So we did kind of like when we lit them the whole. The whole the whole cabin area was like purple smoke everywhere. <laughs> like, it felt so bad. But um, but yeah, the video, came, I was happy with the way the video came out and it was really fun to work with him. Yeah, he's a blast. And yeah, he's he's got endless stories because he's had such a colorful career. Oh, his life is a movie. His life is amazing. It's just like you can't even, it's unbelievable the stuff that he's done and seen. It really is. And what what was funny was I didn't know for the longest time that he was the one that wrote Billion Dollar Babies. And I'm thinking, I've been listening to this song since I was a little kid and I had no idea who wrote it. And now I'm talking to him. Oh, yeah. And actually on the, the song 18, he's the backup vocal singing the high mm -hmm. notes, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> Which crazy. I never realized that. I was like, what? That's you? That's crazy. I know. And then he's like, well, I just ended up working with John Lennon by accident. And I know. I <laughs> don't know. He wild. has all kinds of accents. He was always in the right place at the right time. For sure. And I kind of think, though, that that's what we all tend to do even if we're shy like you and I are both kind of shy people yeah and but yet we still we want to do the art so bad that we'll position ourselves to get with people or or hear from people so that we can do more of it even though we're kind of like oh I really don't want to answer the phone but <laughs> it's the paradox of being an artist <laughs> it is. is that we're all just like 
shy and highly sensitive and it's like oh but like people and judgment but then like oh i have to make this thing and this thing has to be shown to the world so i have to interact with the world if i have to show the world the thing i'm making but the thing that i'm making is so great because i can go within myself and you know like be able to it it, it somehow works together but it's also a paradox (laughs) it's it's like the adrenaline we need to get through the hard part oh it's totally the adrenaline rush it's like you like push yourself through that anxiety and then like bam adrenaline rush and it's like a drug it's amazing Mm -hmm. i had i did a lot of red carpets when i lived in california and i hated every one of them and (laughs) everything that i could think about was just okay this could lead to something this could lead to something so get out there do your camera walk and and all that and uh but it it if it wasn't for the reason I was there, I think I would have just hated every moment with no hope for ever coming out of it with Aww. a smile. It's just not my thing. Yeah. You know, but what amazes me for you is that even though you do feel that way, you can still get out there at a concert in front of a ton of people and just take your photos. I mean, you really lock into what you're doing. You're so sweet. Sometimes, like, if they don't have a a photo pit and it's a big crowd and then the crowd starts squishing me against the stage, (laughs) that that gives me a little bit of claustrophobia. But um, typically, I just, I sort of go into my own little world through the lens. And when I look through the camera, it's like everybody else disappears, unless in that situation, they don't disappear. <laughs> well, I, I've always wondered how that works. So are is there a certain perimeter or certain areas that you're told you can go here, here and here, but you can't go there or obviously yes. you can't cross in front of the singer or anything like that? Well, OK, so it's different. Every venue is different. Doesn't so none of them are the same. Okay. Wow. OK. <laughs> yeah, there, there's different rules. It just really depends which venue, like who who has the stage and it's about the stage and the rules. Um, and then a lot of times if it's a, like a festival or like like Alice Cooper has like a concert outside, but it's like a stage that isn't normally there. They like bring the stage. And so they don't bring like a photo uh, pit thing. But that's because it's sort of like a, a, a private concert. But it's huge. There's a lot of people. So <laughs> but, um, like say if it's a celebrity theater um, in Tepe, which we're going to shoot Christmas pudding on December 4th. Uh, That is very specific to where the photographer is going to be. I am really, really lucky that I get to shoot from backstage, like the runway on that one. I'm the only photographer during that that shoots from that one. And then uh, everybody else, there's like maybe four other spots where you got to like be against the wall or because that whole venue is a circle. So it's like and the stage turns. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's so it's a really complicated venue. And the security people are crazy at them. <laughs> <laughs> they they get really kick out happy. Like if you're like in the aisle and cause like you can't sit anywhere if you're a photographer, you don't have a seat, you know? So like if you're trying to move from one place, they're like, Hey, get out of the vent. Like, I mean, they're kicking people out. Like we had the, our photographers a couple years ago in 2019 got kicked out and like, they were the ones like with, us and they still wouldn't let them back in it was crazy so the security people kind of take their job a little too serious there but yeah i mean i i I can appreciate people doing that to a certain extent but it can't be a detriment to the production yeah yeah yeah. like if you're doing your job wrong like come on know who you're supposed to be securing here right well i had always wondered if there was like a specific photographer etiquette for a concert because I would imagine, though, it also depends on the circumstances. Like if you're specifically doing a promotional thing uh, for a reason, like maybe you're going to be right up five feet from Alice to get certain angle shots, uh, whereas you wouldn't be in a normal concert. Well, so the concerts are really it's uh, it's more like people come from like media, like there's media photographers and then there's uh, his specific people like um, at, at the teen center, like I'm like the teen center photographer. And then like he has a uh, Kyler Clark, who is his personal assistant, but like goes on tour with him to all the countries and stuff and take pictures. So, um, but like a promo thing with him is usually like, that would be uh, a shoot like that you would just schedule with just him. Um, and so like, uh, whereas if he just wanted like a, 
live photo for a promo thing they would just ask a bunch of photographers that recently took his photo and be like hey do you have any alice photos? like i get asked this all the time do you have any alice photos we need this for a milk glass like we need this for a whatever <laughs> right, we need yeah. it for the arizona water we need the picture of alice live you're gonna need live alice shot so it's, it's not like usually planned out it's just sort of like the opportunities come up and then they know what photographers to like hit up later like hey you have alice pictures oh gotcha so, well yeah, yeah. it's not like there aren't plenty of pictures of him out there i can't imagine oh, what the number of times he's been photographed is right. <laughs> right over like 50 years or something <laughs> right like <laughs> i i can only carry pi out to so many digits and then i just stop caring and yeah. i kind of think i would do the same thing with that uh but but when you're at one of his shows and you're shooting do you ever just get caught up in the show itself because his show's they're not concerts. I mean, they're they're shows. They're amazing. They're, he he blows me away because he's not like he's so much more than a musician. Like he is truly an artist, like to the core. Like not not like he he just knows that every part of the production like adds value to the experience, and it's all about the experience. And just like like he like he likes to do what I do, like create a world, you know. But he has his way on a different level than mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just a different it's a different thing. But what amazes me about him and I've seen him perform twice and it's like he literally is commanding everyone on stage like a puppet master. It yeah. really feels like they don't have independent control of themselves. That's amazing. Yeah, he's like the ringmaster. Yes. Like. <laughs> yeah. He really creates quite an illusion on stage. It's it's like nothing else I've ever seen in theater or in concerts. It's really an amazing experience. Yeah, he's so inspiring to be 72. And he just got um, they topped the charts with the best selling album on the Billboard charts with his new album that came out. Excellent. That, that was amazing. I mean, to have a comeback like that at 72 years old, like after a year of not being able to perform, or, you know, go at any concerts, everything's shut down. And then to come out with an album that does that well, it's like we were all just so excited for him. Oh, for sure. And his his album before that, Paranormal, did really well, too. And, yeah. You know, it's just like everything he does at this point, he knows how to do things that people enjoy. And that's really magical because we live in a world that's so oversaturated with art because it's so easy to create that to be able to cut through all the muck and everything that's out there, even with somebody who has a name like he does, is still pretty an amazing thing these days. Absolutely. And he just keeps knocking them out of the park. So, For sure. And th this was the uh, Detroit Stories album, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I did so well. Actually, his his wife showed him on her phone. She was like, "Look, Alice, who could have topped the Billboard charts?" And he was like, "Oh no, that that's Photoshop." <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even believe it at first, I guess. So that's I just think that's like his heart. He's so humble, and he's just such a sweet man. And then while they've been in town so long, because you know, like they they weren't touring. He's been um, in Phoenix for uh, for a while. Uh, they've just been put, pouring so much effort and um, time into his teen center out here, which uh, if you're not in Arizona, you might not be familiar about it, but he has Alice Cooper's Solid Rock Teen Center, which now we just opened a Mesa Teen Center too. So there's one in Phoenix and one in Mesa. And uh, all kids, from 12 to 20 they can get all free classes there to uh, learn guitar learn music production there's multi-million dollar recording studios in there that the kids can record their music for free if you don't own a guitar they're like hey here's a guitar kid um learn how to play we'll teach you how to play for free too there's like uh an art studio if you're not into music you like art there's a dance studio with uh, an amazing dance and Instructor that's in, uh was from do you remember that, that show uh was it star search oh yeah the ed mcmahon show yeah uh well the the dance instructor he he got to second place on, on that oh, no show. kidding wow yeah and he used to be actually alice cooper's wife's dance instructor her personal dance instructor which um it, alice cooper's wife cheryl is actually still one of the backup dancers in alice's show that's how they actually met she auditioned against 2000 other girls to be one of the backup dancers because she had to know uh classical ballet she's amazing like i admire her so much she's 
just like blows me away with how graceful and beautiful and like the the crazy things that she can do (laughs) i love that and it's just so cute how they met and their little like love story was so cute and they've been together this whole time it's just i love them so much so (laughs) and it's interesting that every time i see them photographed together and some of those photographs are ones that you've taken of them yeah uh, you can tell even regardless of the scene that's set up you know like maybe she's got an axe and he's like trying to turn away from it or whatever but even within that you can still see that there's some real connection between these two people they're not just in a scene they really love each other oh yeah no you can just feel the love like it's it's so special they just are amazing and give me hope for the world (laughs) oh for sure for sure so the event that you're working you guys are working on right now with alice tell us about that one So it's called Alice Cooper's Proof is in the Pudding, and we're really excited because we didn't have it last year, but it's been going on for 14 years, and every year he allows any kid, I believe, I want to say from 11 11 or 12 until 24, and any any instrument, if you're a soloist and you just play the saxophone, if you're a mariachi band with nine people, like it's, if you're a rapper, like, like any kind of music, um, and any amount of people in your band, there's two categories, a soloist category and a band category. And, uh, they will pick a uh, first place. Well, first through third place, but both first place winners of each category will get to open for Alice Cooper and special celebrity friends on December 4th. And that's always like my favorite part of proof is just like, after you go through this long series of, uh, rounds of, you know, like, like people get, get to the next round and eliminated you see the kid that uh, that just like their dreams come true and like they're on this big stage and it's just so exciting um but beyond that it because you know there can only be like one winner we really uh it, it's building such a community between musicians like even uh the last decade i've seen really the local music scene in phoenix uh soar and become so much more of a community and people are just, they look out for each other because with bands like you want to network because that band might might be able to bring you to their show to open for them or something like it's not so competitive even though we're in a competition like we're all, we all are really um about community and networking and just like being supportive of each other so so and everyone really seems to have that vibe and it's just such a like really like wholesome like family feeling to be a part of the the concert series and all the families are that are involved like I get to know the kids parents and they're just there's I just met such cool people through it so it's been a really fun thing well it's it's awesome too to have an opportunity to open up for Alice Cooper especially yeah. at that young of an age yeah oh my gosh right but the experience of auditioning in you know in a big setting like that in yeah front of on a big crowd. stages yeah they have to play on like a real stage like several times in front of like hundreds of people so it's like it's it, it that also is just like helping them grow as an artist too if maybe they're just not ready yet like then they come the kids they come back a lot of the years if they don't make it the first year you know like if they they don't make it to the end they'll keep coming back and trying getting better so it's really cool to watch them do that well i like that because it's not like well that didn't work out i guess i'll go do something else you know maybe i'll get into sports or racing or you know like they, they care enough to stick with it and that the fact that they return and they're they're not like well I, I'm a loser. They didn't get that in their no. head. They got the, I'm going to do better next year attitude. Yeah, and then they do, and they improve, and, you know, they grow as people and artists, too. So it's really cool. Yeah, I would like to see, uh, like, a barbershop quartet open for Alice. I think that would oh be Oh, my fun. gosh. That would be <laughs> so cool. I would love that, like, an acapella thing. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah, and then have, have them do versions of Alice Cooper songs. That would be so cute. <laughs> so the the event that they open the show for, though, that's not Christmas pudding, or is that Christmas pudding? Uh, it is Christmas pudding that they open for. Okay. So here's the question that I have, because you are known to be a celebrity photographer. So this could mean one of three things. Either you're a celebrity and you photograph people, <laughs> or you photograph celebrities, or you're a celebrity that photographs celebrities. <laughs> Well, I'm just lucky enough to be a fly on the wall with 
celebrities in the same room sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you take you've taken some amazing photos, especially of, of Alice's band, uh, not Aww. his regular band, but the band that he plays with at Christmas Pudding. Uh, just really stunning photos that bring out uh, I. I don't know if these are the right words, so please forgive me if they're not, but they, <laughs> okay. they bring out a realism that I don't see in a lot of other photos. Oh, well, thank you. It's always like really magical and just sort of blows me away when I am shooting those kind of pictures because I'm just like, wow, like so many people would want to be where I'm standing right now. Like I'm so blessed. Uh, this is amazing. Um, but I, yeah, he he's also just like such an amazing performer. Like, how can you not take a good picture of him? Like, it's so easy. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> he gets to do like a ton of content. So. But he's also performing with Joe Perry and Johnny oh, Depp. Yeah. I mean, this is a pretty mm-hmm. big event. Oh yeah, and um, uh, there's always new people every year too. Like Larry the Cable Guy comes a lot. He's so awesome. I love him so much. Um. Uh, Don Felder from the Eagles. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, he was really cool. Patrick Warburton, who you might know better from Family Guy as the cop in the wheelchair. Oh. Um, the voice of the cop in the wheelchair and Family Guy. Um, but he he comes out a lot to to do stuff with us. And then um, there there's just a, a bunch of random like actors. And, uh, like Kiss has come out. Tommy Thayer from Kiss comes out a lot more, but Kiss the band has come out. Actually, they they um they they ate the kids' pizza at one show. <laughs> <laughs> like, like they had like a room, like a green room full of like really nice stuff, and like the dancers had like Little Caesars brought in, and like Gene Simmons just took the Little Caesars pizza, and we were like, no. <laughs> oh, that's amazing! I love it. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you, you've had some really amazing opportunities to shoot these people and to, uh, spread that joy with others. But do you ever sit there and think about how it came about and say, I work for this. And the reason that I'm here is because they think I'm good enough to be here. And does that, does that help your, your feeling of anxiety at all? So I have like total, like, what is that called when you're like in disbelief that you're, <laughs> <my> <laughs> like, uh, I, there's a word for it. I can't remember it, but, um, no, <laughs> <laughs> what does it okay? so I, I just, um, I'm sort of like, when are you guys going to realize that I shouldn't be here? <laughs> like, <laughs> like that kind of feeling. Um, but like, obviously over the years, it's gotten better. The first, the first two years were sort of like, wow, hopefully no one notices that I suck and I don't like get kicked out of here. Oh. But like, we'll just, but you know what, that, that's something I realized that like, even, even the really famous people feel like that. Like they have this, this like insecurity of like, was that good enough? Like, are you sure are you guys like, are you sure that's good enough? Like uh, Larry, the cable guy specifically kind of opened my eyes up to that because I was shooting him from backstage and he, he's like on stage doing his like amazing comedy and making everybody laugh with this big giant personality that you would think is so confident and just like incredible. And he walks off the stage after a set and I'm like the first human he walks by and he looks over at me like like a 12 year old little boy and was like, did that sound OK? Was that OK? And I was like, Larry, the cable guy, you're Larry, the cable guy. Like, of course, that was OK. Like, what do you <laughs> want to be right. that for? Like, I'm just a stupid photographer. But that moment I was like, oh, my God, he's a human, too. Like he like. He is also like, wait, did I do a good enough job? Like, is everyone going to be okay with like what I just did? And, like, I never really looked at them that way. I always looked at them as like sort of like superhuman. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, they they must know a secret that I don't know, and they have confidence like just beyond that I could ever experience. But they they all just hide it too. <laughs> well, but maybe they do what you do when you're at a concert and you're shooting. It's like they're in their zone. Yeah. But as right. soon as they get out of that zone, as soon as he walks off the stage and he comes out of that focus then he's like oh crap i hope that was okay i think that's amazing i i love that that people who do that for a living still have that edge to them where they they aren't they're confident enough to go out and do it but not so cocky about it that they just walk off going that was good enough well if if we don't ask ourselves like was that good enough like you know like obviously everyone wants to aspire to 
be better and like not you know not suck <laughs> so like we, I think it's important to ask ourselves that sometimes too and not be cocky about it but um that was just I don't know it was really eye-opening to me just to, I was like oh we're we're all the same so like that's that's cool the the I can kind of relate to that because I remember uh, watching an interview with Hans Zimmer, who's, you know, the top of the mountain in film composition these days. And he was saying, whenever I get a new film and I look at it, I say, you should just fire me. I'm not good. I'm not going to be able to do a good job. And then, of course, you know, he turns out some, you know, unbelievable award winning score. Yeah. But if he if he walks into a situation and still has that anxiety that maybe this is the one that isn't going to go well, I can't feel bad about thinking that maybe, you know, when I start taking on a new project that why did they want me for this? Aww. You know, but it, it also can work for you and push you to do better as long as it doesn't like debilitate you. Right. Like as long as it's not like paralyzing you from actually trying. Exactly. So before we wrap up, I have a couple more questions for you. And by the way, the uh, the concerts, these auditions that uh, are are held for Putting, these are free that people can attend. They are. Anybody, well, I mean, anybody from anywhere can come, but obviously you're in another state, it might be difficult, but you're welcome. <laughs> but in Arizona, um, in Phoenix, specifically, Phoenix, Tempe, and Mesa, there's a, there's a couple more dates, and you can go to alicecoopersolidrock.com, and it'll tell you the dates of the events that are coming up. Um, I know specifically the next one is on the 15th and the 16th of October at Paradise Valley Community College. I don't know the one after that, but if you go to the website, you can find out. <laughs> well, and, you know, uh, I wish I did live in, in Phoenix. because I didn't really find out about all this until after I had moved to L.A. and then to Vegas. Uh, so I didn't get to, to see these, but I'm hoping to make it down one of that these years. That would be years. so cool. Yeah, that would be amazing. I think it would be so inspiring to watch these kids just giving it their all. Oh, my gosh. Some of them are like, there's like 11 year olds. And then like they make me feel like, what am I doing with my life? You're 11 <laughs> and you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're slightly more than 11 and you're amazing. No, you're <laughs> so one, one more question about photography. Um, so not only do you do these amazing concert photos and you do these just stunning, surreal worlds that you create, but you also do uh, boudoir photography. Well, uh, I, I started with boudoir photography. I mean, I, I would still do it if some people would, would want that. Uh. But since um, since the coming of the... The, uh, the smartphones and the cameras on the phone, uh, I don't get those requests as often, but they were really fun. And that's really how um, I started off in photography is just like a, like getting paid as a job. Like people were like, oh, how much do you charge for this? And I was like, oh, my gosh, you want to pay me money? OK, <laughs> <laughs> so that was, I mean, was a long time ago, like it was like pre-smartphone right. <laughs> again though the trial of being an artist you mean what do you mean you want to pay me for my work that's incredible i know right I was like, well, when okay. we should just be saying here's what this costs i know but we <laughs> don't well. because we struggle with our own values right that's so true was it easy did you because there's got to be a lot of psychology involved in those oh, kind of shoots too for, well I mean, it's you just get a, a bunch of ladies that are friends, and they get drunk and wear lingerie, and it's oh. it's not that it's not that psychological. Well, that just took the romance out of it. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> okay, well, I I was just I mean to to because it's one thing for somebody to say I really want to do a photo shoot like this, and it's another thing to actually show up, be with a photographer that you're not familiar with or or know have maybe yeah. met once or twice. I mean, that that I would imagine no, is a that's real experience. True. That's I know. I mean, I I would see for me as a photographer, it's like that's what I do every day. So it's just like I'm on, you know, autopilot. I know like the, the little phrases and everything. And I guess as a person who's like not a model, if you're not used to getting your picture taken ever, like that would be. You know, sometimes there is like I have to walk them through it mentally, whereas like they're they're trying way too hard to be posy or like what did they make me do in my life touch photo in high school? Like, <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. figure it out. Well, when and I went I to glamour to, shots. Yeah. So I have to sort of just like get them to relax. And, uh, you know, I, I always show them poses like myself. I'll just like, be like, like this. And then <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, that's what I meant. Like there, there, I would imagine there's a, that element of, I need to help them be calm and feel comfortable. Yeah, I mean, if it were me, I would probably walk in and go, do you have eight or nine full room rugs that I can cover up with? And you just take <laughs> no. a shot of my eye. Like I'll, I'll just oh, leave a little God. opening for my eye. But because I, I would I would think that the idea of doing something versus the reality of doing something, it would kind of hit you when you show up and you're like, yeah, I thought about it, but I didn't really think what it was going to be like with the boudoir. Well, that's why there's alcohol with the boudoir. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> so it's like, here's some wine. You're going to relax. You'll feel good by the time your shoot's ready. So. There you go. <laughs> and, and, you know, you, you and I were talking about this before, the idea of having a woman shoot them versus a man because men are yeah. so territorial that they wouldn't want a guy to see that before they did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that has where it's been my advantage before. Where they're like, well, my boyfriend won't be mad if I shoot with you because you're a girl. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win. Like, okay, I mean, that's cool. Uh, I get an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> so my my last question for you is, you know, you mentioned you have two kids and, yeah. you're, you know, you've got the school that you do. You're doing these photography events. Uh, how do you balance all of this in your life? I mean, I know that you're busy just trying to connect with you to be able to do this interview yeah. uh, was a challenge because you're so high in demand and you have so much going oh, on. Oh, you're so sweet. But how do you uh, keep your sanity through all of that? Oh, I don't know. It's It doesn't feel like insanity. I know a lot of like, like my mom, she's a very like in the box, like everything's scheduled. Like every, like, like I, my life drives my mom insane. Like her, she doesn't understand. <laughs> she, she gets so frustrated with my life, but, um, no, I don't know. I just, it just feels like right for me. Like it just feels natural. It feels like this is like, a, a flow, like a river flowing instead of like a stagnant pond. It's like, it's good. So, well, and and I can understand that I am one of those people that only needs a few hours of sleep per night. And I've been like that since I was a kid. So for me to only get five hours of sleep and be able to function for 19 hours is not a big deal. (laughs) But other people, they'll have like one night where they can't sleep or they have to stay up for some reason. And I don't know how you do it. Well, it's because this is my normal way. It isn't odd to me. You know, if I had if I only got two hours of sleep, yeah, I'd probably feel like you do. Well, and also, I mean, like, I'll have catch up days, like where there's there's our days where it's like, hey, cool, I don't have to do anything. I'm sleeping like a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So where can people find you and your work? So I am on SurrealSister.com and also on Instagram, uh, SurrealSisterPhotog. Um, I'm on Facebook, too, um, but... Like you have to be special to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I will have those links in the show notes as well. Um, okay, so I have one more question for you. I have to ask you where the surreal sister came from. Oh, okay. Well, uh, me and my sister started shooting together years ago, and uh, when we were doing the boudoir photos actually and she everybody would be like oh my gosh your photos are so surreal like all the time that's what people would say they're so surreal they're so surreal and then um facebook had just come out and i really didn't want to get a facebook i was like really kind of salty about myspace like not working anymore and was like well i'm not gonna put a bunch of stuff onto something that's gonna like go away anyways we're right. not gonna get on the Facebook thing like whatever it's stupid and but then I, I was you know meeting these ladies and they wanted to like promote me and like sh- when tag me on this Facebook thing and I was like oh, all right and they're like well, what, what do we call you what's your n- photo name because <laughs> I don't even have a name <laughs> <laughs> um so and then my sister's like I don't know everyone says our stuff's surreal we'll call it surreal sister so that's kind of where that came from it was sort of like <laughs> Just just uh, out of necessity last minute, but it's stuck. So. Well, I mean, and it really, I think it's a very accurate description. I mean, I, I haven't seen those photos from back then, but the kind of stuff that you're doing now certainly lives up to that name. And Aww, I like how organically that happened. Thanks. Yeah, me too. Yeah, very cool. Well, Rachel, I can't thank you enough for, for hanging with me to find a schedule to do this and for wanting to come on the show. That really means a lot to me. I love you to pieces. I love your work. You're an amazing human being. And I am just so honored to be part of your world. Oh, <laughs> I am so honored to be part of your world. And I love you so much, too. Thank you for having me um, and having like a 
ridiculous amount of patience with me. <laughs> I think you've been asking me for at least a couple of years. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, but you know, it was worth it. <laughs> I agree. I just, you're amazing. And I thank you so much because I um, have weird phone anxiety too. And like, you just sort of were like, it just kept kind of being persistent every now and then. And I've always wanted to do it, but finally you caught me at a good time. So oh, thank good. you. Well, you did fine. Yeah. If that makes you feel any better, you're yeah, wonderful. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> thank you. You take care. We'll stay in touch. And uh, I can't wait to see the next thing you do because I, I really love your work. No, oh, well, uh, maybe the next thing that I do will be with you. Wink, wink. Wink, so. wink. <laughs> Hint, drop. <laughs> we'll talk soon, Rachel. Thank you again okay. for coming on the show. You're amazing. You're amazing. Bye. Bye-bye. Seriously, were you not just hugging your phone through that? How could you not just want to be this woman's friend? I mean, go to her website check out her artwork. It's absolutely stunning. If you're in Phoenix and you can make it to one of those Alice Cooper proof is in the pudding events, get down there. I would, I'm going to have to schedule some time next year to go uh, because they're just fantastic events. I would really love to experience that in person, but go to Rachel's website, check out her work. She is absolutely amazing. Amazing. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, Rachel, for all the uh, scheduling and everything that we needed to do to put this together. I'm so grateful I got a chance to talk to you. And you guys have a wonderful weekend. We will see you on Wednesday for my next album review that is kind of related to this interview. Hint. There, I dropped a hint. Have a great week, guys. Cheers. Cheers.